Someone is flourishing. Man who speaks in tongues, when he speaks, the convicting power is strong because the Holy Ghost is releasing the resources of that ministry. Find a man who doesn't pray, he can be shouting about hell, shouting about repentance. We will be chewing bubble gum. Ah, that a great service, great service. Because he's talking gnosis, he's talking from his brain. You know, some people come and they are sweating. Suit is suit is wet. If you don't repent, you will go to work. Some even carry megaphone and they stand in the market. Before you go there, have conviction. No? It is important for us to go everywhere. And I, I salute everybody who go to city centers. It's, it's common in Europe because in Europe. It's difficult to confront anybody. If you meet anybody, they will sue you. So it's better to go and stand where they are and be shouting and bombard them. And so I'm saying, as beautiful as that is, make sure you pray first. Let there be conviction in your spirit. Because if you shout, you will be encouraged that you have done the work of, work of God. But you may not be profitable. So the, the joy is not that we have done the work. The joy is that we are profitable. Jesus said, that if you are my disciples he said you will bring fruit and your fruit will abide so they, it's not just i did the job what is the fruit so in order for you not to be barren in your evangelizing enterprise pray and if it's possible pray more than you preach if you want to preach for one hour make sure you have enough time of prayer if you can't pray for one hour you don't have one hour message your message may be for three minutes. The rest is philosophy. And those who are discerning, they will know. The first ten minutes, you will be on fire. After a while, you will descend. Because you, you can't stay up there. It's difficult. It takes, it takes building up yourself upon your most holy faith to come up. To stay up there, you must be carried there. So please, as important as evangelism is, intercession is more important. Pray before you preach. Because it is in that ministry of the spirit that is activated through tongues and prayers either in your understanding or tongues that engenders conviction right the second ministry of the holy ghost i told you is revelational ministry when you pray he reveals things to you in jeremiah 33 verse 10 he said ask of me i will answer and he said i will show you many christians are not seeing anything the only thing they are seeing is the frown on the faces of their bosses so they are trying to please their bosses the frustrations of life that's what they are seeing but there are many other people who are seen from a superior realm. And so although the fig tree might not blossom, the labor of the olive might fail. There may be no head, no, 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 no sheep, no donkey, no cattle in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the store. Yet, he will rejoice in the Lord because he knows that God is his salvation. For you to see at that level, you must pray. Because the devil will show you many things that will discourage you. You are walking, you see somebody gossiping you. You hear somebody pulling you down. You are hearing news that in your work, in your office, they are planning to remove you. All the news around you are bad. The reason you will keep your joy is because you are seen beyond the earthly news. And so when you find Christians who suffer depression, frustration and pain, it's because they are not seen. He say, ask of me. I don't only answer prayer. I also use prayer as a route to show. And so the revelational ministry of the Holy Spirit, amongst other things, is activated as you engage in prayer and prayer in the Spirit. When you pray in tongues, you see more. Is that okay? So if you want to see more about your job, see more about your career, see more about your ministry, pray. In fact, sometimes when you pray, the realms will be open for you even when you stop praying. So you are driving, the realm has not closed. What you open can remain open for three weeks. You are driving, you are showering, and they are still showing you things. But you see, those who don't pray, the realms are short to them. So they are asking questions. What should we do? What is God saying? Where are we going now? A Christian should not be confused. A Christian actually should not just have direction, but give direction to the world. But that level of precision in life is at the mercy of prayer. And so when you pray, the revelational ministry of the Holy Ghost is activated. That's why the gift of tongues is particularly very important and i'm not saying those who don't speak in tongues yet don't have revelation but i'm saying those who speak in tongues god reveals a lot to them are you following number three i, I also taught you about um 
the transformational ministry of the Holy Spirit. Part of the things God shows you is to change you, is to transform you, is to transfigure you. And so when you find people who don't pray enough, because there are many errors you have that people may not be able to tell you, especially those of us who don't have accountability cycles. You need to have a spiritual authority that can rebuke you. You have a father and then you have 10,000 mentors. There's nothing wrong with it. In the multitude of counsel, there's safety. So you need accountability group that will threat, that will correct you, warn you, and they don't care about your face. In fact, I know I have some people in my life who don't, they don't have, they don't have the time to call me apostle. They will look at you and say, Michael, how are you? You say, fine, sir. Who, if they call you apostle, would you refuse? <laughs> Michael, how are you? I say, yes, yeah, sir, I'm fine, sir. I saw this, I saw this, stop it. If you like, be angry. In fact, if you're angry, they won't talk to you again because it's, it's an honor for them to talk to you. That's what helps you. And then if you have such people, still have other friends that you know can tell you the truth. Because they are at that spiritual level and they love you enough not to keep quiet when you are erring. So they will tell you the truth. It will help you a great deal. But you see, sometimes, even those people, they don't see some things. And so you see many people who are connected to the right people, but their life is in so much error. Because sometimes these people are not seeing everything. When you go to the place of prayer, the Holy Ghost will see everything. He's the one to tell you that you are keeping malice and you are easily offended. Stop so that you can go far. And if you don't stop, you will come for one month. He will say, you are keeping malice and you are easily offended. Stop so that you can go far. Because that's where your journey with him will stop until you move. Because he's already moved. If you don't move, you won't move. And so he said, if you bring your offering to the altar, drop it, go and make peace. I don't care about the offering as much as I care about you. And just in case the spiritual authority over your life is afraid of you, this one won't fear you. Because there are some people that, because they give seed to authorities, the authorities are careful. So even when they need to tell them about heavy matters, they, they, they coat it in so much diplomacy that the weight of the matter goes down. How can somebody fornicate? You are telling him, you know, this life, eh? the temptation is hard so please be careful next time really that person will go to hell you need somebody that will tell you my what what for the next six months do this do that do that and he will chastise you he will chastise you he will chastise you until your heart your soul crushes whether you give money or you don't give he doesn't care he will tell you and in case you don't have such the holy ghost He's not afraid of your face. He created your face. He knows all the dimensions of your face. If you like, squeeze it. If you like, smile. He will tell you the way it is. You are a thief. Stop stealing. You are a liar. Stop lying. You are lustful. Stop it. You can cut that from your spiritual authority, but not the Holy Ghost. He judges the intents of the heart. But you see, for this kind of ministry to become very strong, you need to pray in tongues. Because it's not your prayer that makes him talk, but it will make you sensitive. So the transformational ministry of the Holy Ghost is stronger in your life when you pray in the Spirit. So there are many benefits for the baptism of the Spirit. And I showed you also last week four ways of receiving that baptism. Number one, I said it's by what? Laying on of hands. In Acts 19, we saw people in Ephesus. Paul met them and they said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we have not as much as said of the Holy Ghost. And they said, ah, ah. What baptism were you baptized unto then? They said, baptism of joy. Say, Abba, you are outdated now. <laughs> there are higher baptisms now. They are higher. The baptism of joy is for Pharisees. When you are a believer, there are higher baptisms. You need baptism into the body. You need baptism in the Holy Ghost. What are you still doing here? And the Bible said, he, teach, he preached the gospel to them. They believed. So they received baptism into the body. He now said, he laid his hands upon them. And they were filled with the spirit and began to speak in tongues and prophesy you see that so one of the ways of receiving the baptism of the holy ghost is by the laying on of hands of those who are filled to the overflow it's not those who are filled <laughs> some of you are filled but the measure is you you you, <laughs> you need to, even you you are dry <laughs> sorry that's 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 just on a lighter note but you see it's important to stay filled are you following 
when the apostles prayed the bible said they were filled again so you need to keep praying for the infilling to continue so that you can impact somebody else number two how do you receive the baptism of the spirit by staying under an atmosphere of the move of the spirit in acts chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10 we saw peter had a vision and from verse 40 to 44 he went to Cornelius' house on account of the direction he got from that vision and the bible said as he was talking to them he said the holy ghost fell on them you see that a lot in church and in services sometimes the atmosphere becomes charged people go under the anointing and they start speaking in tongues in fact one of the testimonies we got from a brother in the last meeting in the uk he said he has never spoken in tongues he came to the, for the meeting nobody laid hands on him but there was a tempo we hit in the meeting it became impossible for his spirit to remain quiet and tongues gushed out of him now many people receive baptism in the holy ghost under this condition but this has led to an error in the teaching in many quarters they tell you for you to be baptized in the holy ghost you must be overwhelmed so you start speaking in tongues uncontrollably no that happens when you are baptized under the atmosphere it doesn't mean you speak in tongues uncontrollably all the time are you following and i've handled all of those corrections in the last service so i'm not going over it so the second way to receive the baptism of the spirit is to stay under an atmosphere number three i said to receive the baptism of the holy ghost you obey the word of god paul peter said the holy ghost is given to them that obey him so when you obey his word especially in receiving christ the baptism can come to you many times when you lead people to christ even before you baptize them they start speaking in tongues because of their their heart posture they receive christ with so much gladness so they are overtaken and it begins to it just begins to gush out gush out and gush out of their spirit now this is important for you to know because there are some of you you were baptized in the holy ghost in a service but hands have not been laid on you it's not a must that hands must be laid on you before you are baptized in the holy ghost you are already baptized in the holy spirit you are just not speaking in tongues yet because you don't have understanding and that was why i corrected some of the errors in speaking in tongues i said number one it's not the holy ghost that speaks you are the one who speaks uh, paul said i will pray in the spirit first corinthians 14 verse 14 and 15 I will pray with my understanding. I will sing in the spirit. I will sing in my understanding. So it was something he was doing willfully. It was not God doing it. He was doing it with his will. In Acts 2.4, the Bible said when they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, it said they spake as the spirit gave utterance. It was not the spirit that spoke. They were the ones who spoke. But they received an inspiration. Because this is a faith adventure. If you don't speak, you'll be filled. But the Holy Ghost won't speak through you. You are the one to speak. He gives the utterance. The Holy Ghost will not speak for you. You see that? There are many people who are baptized in the Holy Ghost. They are hearing it inside, but they are waiting for the Holy Ghost to speak. If the Holy Ghost, where is his mouth? Are you seeing it? You are the one to speak. The Bible said, they speak. They speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. The second error I corrected was the fact that many say you don't pray willfully. But that's not true. The same way you willfully pray with your understanding, that's how you pray willfully in the spirit. Paul said, I will. He didn't say when the Holy Ghost overwhelms me. He said, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in my understanding. The, second, the third error I corrected is the fact that some say, for you to speak in tongues, people must understand. And I said, it's not a must. Because there are three levels to this thing. There is a prayer in tongues that is unto God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 and 14 verse 14. The Bible makes us understand that you don't understand what you are saying and nobody understands it. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 he said, If you pray in the spirit, he said, no man understand it. He said, how be it in the spirit you are uttering mystery? Only God understands. In verse 14, Paul said, I will pray in my understanding. I will pray in the spirit my understanding will be unfruitful that means even me praying i don't understand it's an act of faith and that's why it's called unknown tongues if you understand it why is it unknown tongues if men understand it why is it unknown tongues so the bible clearly stated that you don't understand men don't understand because it's a prayer unto god 
However, although you don't understand it, will defy you. That's the mystery behind it. Number two, the Bible said, when you pray, you speak in tongues in a congregation. It said, the Holy Ghost should give interpretation so that people are edified. So you see the focus now is not your edification. It's not you just speaking to God now. Now it's about the people's edification because you are talking to the people. So the first dimension of tongues is you being edified and you talking to God. So you don't need understanding because God whom you are talking to is understanding. The second dimension is not you talking to God or you being edified. Is the people being edified because it's the people you are talking to. So Paul is saying when you are in a congregation like this, if I just come here now and I carry microphone and for one hour I say, imagine I want to teach you. I said principles of baptism and I start. La par kofe, soruka parakaka susa, mamombre hesifa karatoa. And then I speak for two hours. I say that is the mystery of baptism. God bless you. You will say, you will be like, what? What is the mystery? That means you have to learn the mystery in the mystery. So Paul is saying, if you are talking to a congregation, don't talk in tongues unless there's an interpreter. So I can be preaching now and then the Holy Ghost brings a message. And then within my preaching, Laros Tafakira Axta Vrando Zuzakibara Akta Caesar. If it is God giving a message, somebody will rise up and say, Sir, this is what you said. You are saying God is opening a season over EGMI. And it's opening new doors to new nations and it's bringing us into new level of authority. Amen. We are blessed. Now, see the way everybody started shouting amen. When I said it in tongues, why didn't you shout amen? Because you didn't hear. It didn't edify you. Are you getting what Paul was trying to communicate? So there is a dimension of tongues where you are talking to God and he's charging you up. Because you are building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. There's another dimension that is to the church. When you are talking to the church, he said, preach in cognitive terms. Because one word in cognitive terms will profit them more than 10,000 words in tongues. Because it's when they hear that their faith catch fire. So that's the second level. So at that level, only speak if either you are giving interpretation or if somebody in the audience is giving interpretation. When that happens, then we can flow like that. And he said, if it happens like that, it becomes prophecy because it's a message to the church and then there's a third level which is called diverse kinds of tongues and i said at the level of diverse kinds of tongues the holy ghost energizes and empowers you to speak a language you didn't know before so it is still unknown tongues to you but others will hear because it's their language but you it's an unknown tongue because you didn't know that language but because others hear it Although it's an unknown tongue, it's called diverse kinds of tongues. That's what the apostles were speaking on the day of Pentecost. And that's why over 18 nations that were there heard them and understood. For the apostles, they didn't know what they were saying. But the people heard them. So that possibility also exists. And many times God does that as a sign for unbelievers. Are you following? So these are three operations of tongue. It's important for you to know this. Because there are many places you go to, you want to preach Christ, then they'll start asking you questions like this. And then, although God sent you there, you will not be profitable to God and you will not be fruitful because you didn't take time to understand these truths. And it's also important because if you know it, it will bless you when you are doing it because you are doing it with understanding. If I go to my prayer closet and I want to pray, I'm going there because I want to edify myself. I want to activate the ministry of the Holy Ghost. So I'm praying with a consciousness. I'm not just praying religiously. But a man who doesn't know these things, he may just be praying religiously and acting in certain ways and it may just be funny. It may be just too funny. You see that? So these things are very important significances and it's important for us to know them. Now, very quickly, what are the 10 benefits of speaking in tongues? I try to outline 10 of them. To help somebody here who doesn't see the need for speaking in tongues to begin to speak in tongues. Hmm. The way time flies. How come? Jerry, come and interpret why time is flying so fast. I was told you are a man of the spirit. You know, some people always 
they are always touching realms, dimensions. Tell us why in five minutes give us a concise explanation why time is moving so fast. Give Jerry the microphone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, uh. Holy, uh, uh, uh. Oh God. Even if a school of the spirit. <laughs> Can you imagine? The brother actually took a microphone to him. or 10 benefits of praying in tongues number one when we pray in tongues it helps us to operate at the highest level of our faith in Jude verse 20 it said building up yourselves upon your most holy faith praying in the spirit listen your faith level can be this high now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God Faith does not come by speaking in tongues. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. But hear this. Your faith level can be at the height of this microphone. Are you seeing this? This may be your faith level. And so one day you woke up, you prayed, the dead came back to life. Because you were operating here. You went somewhere, somebody was blind. You commanded the eyes open. Two weeks later, you were betrayed by a friend and your heart was broken your faith would drop here if you see the dead and they call you you run not because you don't have faith to raise the dead but your faith is under attack so your faith level may be here but your life may be here and the bible said the judge shall live by faith what does tongue do when you are praying in tongues tongues jack up your faith so that you operate always at the highest level of your faith there are many people who have faith for a glorious life, but they are living like slaves. There are many people who have faith for signs and wonders, but they are living. Have you not gone for a meeting before you saw something and you came alive? You were looking for who has cripples, crutches. You collect the crutches and the person starts walking. Another day you go for a miracle service, but your faith was low. You saw somebody who just had knee pain. You say, anybody who is sick here, the Lord help you. The Lord bless you. The Lord heal you. You don't even have enough boldness to say, if you are healed, come. Meanwhile, yesterday you collected crutches, but today you don't have boldness to say if you are healed. Come. You know why? Your faith is under attack. There are many forces. You remember the prayer of Jesus for Peter? He says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you. Luke 22, 39. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. So there are times when people's faith are under attack. Although they are men of faith, they are not operating in faith. And there are those who have died like that. That window, two weeks window, where their faith went down that was that that was the window they were attacked with cancer that was the window they were attacked with covid and they died and then you are looking at them you say what how can this kind of person because faith can be attacked when you pray in tongues constantly you build yourself on your faith level you ascend to the highest level of your faith it charges you to keep operating at the highest level of your faith so your life does not fluctuate your life becomes upward and forward only that's why tongues is very important. It's a building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Number two, why do we pray in tongues? When we pray in tongues or generally pray in the spirit, it brings us into the perfect will of God. There are many times you stood up, you would have gone into error. But you have prayed too much to go into error. So while you stood up, you made up your mind to go and err. Forces will be aligned to push you into the right path. You know, 
and some of you who are here you know especially your earlier days when today you are on fire tomorrow you are cold you know one of the signs of spiritual immaturity is that today you can be on fire but tomorrow you are very cold so the guy who was prophesying yesterday next week you come he's crying you say what happened you say kai i fell again i don't know why oh god kill me let me lord kill me i'm a disappointment to you and god is just looking at you and say uh, baby grow up you are a baby that's the right child that's what it means you know my daddy my daddy your baby is singing so you are you are a babe you are a babe when you grow you start fluctuating now one of the things that will help you before your 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 consecration and sanctification becomes strong is praying in tongues have, have some of you not been there me i've been there before the devil attacks you attacks your purity so much you now wake up you look at a damn cell, you say kai ah you go to sleep you see her you wake up you are going to school to class you see her and there are sometimes when the devil wants to kill you you are going to buy big she too is coming to buy big you now go for e3 the moment you are stepping out of the e3 that's when she is coming you now sit back for five more minutes you say give me toothpick <laughs> oh guy you are finished eating go away give me toothpick what are you doing with toothpick you eat you eat you eat uh okpa. it would what drink water wash your mouth go you don't need toothpick did you eat cow meat what are you doing with uh, give me toothpick they bring toothpick you say kai this sort is a lie somebody came in and your 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 heart your your soul is shaking that's easy you will now you know how the devil works as the devil is dealing with you he's dealing with the person too so two of you will look at yourself and smile ah the grave is that's how they they dig the grave in the spirit it's called digging of the grave as we are going you will now collide at yourself phone with four you become a gentleman <laughs> you that don't serve anybody oh my dear sorry um here's your phone she will, she, will, she will be nice thank you so much the next thing you collect number for two weeks you are chatting ah, ah i don't know how many of you were around during extra cool you will see people on phone from 12 midnight to 5 30 a.m when they go into class because they slept on extra cool after two weeks three weeks you are now planning where you will meet you say let's go here let's go there Meanwhile, both of you know in your heart that you are about to fall into iniquity. Because there was no prayer investment in your life, you can't enter the perfect will of God. You may know it, but you can't enter. But you see, a man who prays, the day you planned, you will go there and as you arrive, you will now see a pastor that used to call you man of God. He will say, ah, we came here for retreat. <laughs> are you also for retreat? You say, yes, I came for retreat. Um, how many days are you here for? Three days three days you will turn that place of iniquity that's how some of us survive though it's not every day we are strong 15 years ago when you were born for jesus you were all that garbages on your soul you think you can keep the consecration just because hmm, consecration is a long rope it's a process but many times when we plan to fall god will intercept because when you pray in the spirit he said we do not know what to pray for as we ought to he said the spirit helped our infirmities with groanings that cannot be uttered and he went to verse 27 see what he said in romans 8 27 see it is this prayer that causes you to walk always in the perfect will of god he said and him that searched the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god so sometimes you are praying you are praying in the spirit you enter into groaning that groaning is not for bread oh it's because Two months you are supposed to go into masturbation three months you are supposed to go into fornication and that fornication the way the devil will do it he will rope you into it for six years and in that six years your whole preparation season will be eaten up you will never be a prophet again sometimes the devil will do that fornication in a way that you'll be caught and so as you are caught for the next 15 years everybody knows you as fornicator you have become a genuine preacher but then they look at you they say be careful all the girls take care of her. take care you know men don't forgive take care of this man this is a, ro a wolf in sheep clothing you are genuine but your ministry has ended and so god knows and because he knows that your destiny and your calling is at stake he will mobilize this prayer and use it to cross the lines 
to fall for you in pleasant places. And so even when you don't want, you will still walk in the will of God. You know, when you meet a pastor in such situation, you will be angry. How did he come here? It's your destiny God is saving. Praying in the spirit. It causes God to align you to his perfect will. Because at that point, the Holy Ghost takes over. Because if he leaves you, you will almost pray that God open my heart to accept me. Meanwhile, you are about to be buried. Praying in the spirit. People who don't pray, I can tell you, they are largely carnal. That's why when you start falling into carnality, your prayer begins to die. The altar is not consistent with iniquity. And so praying in the spirit, very important. Number three. What is the benefit of praying in the spirit? Praying in the spirit activates your spirit man. Meanwhile, all the wealth of grace is in your spirit man. But you see, if it is not activated, you cannot walk in dominion. You have all of the dimensions of God locked in your spirit. But it has to be activated for you to walk in dominion. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 14, he said, when I pray in the spirit, my spirit is the one praying. So you bring your spirit under spiritual activity. It's like spiritual gymming. It's difficult, but it will flex your spiritual muscles. That's why most of you, when you started praying in the spirit, five minutes look like 10 hours. 20 minutes look, look like two years. And in fact, when you finish, after laboring and praying for 30 minutes, you may not go back again for three weeks. Because every time you gym, there are pains in your muscles. I went the other time to keep fit. My friend says, so came and said, uh, I'm rusty. I say, are you sure? He said, come, come. It's a little exercise. I say, eh, it's okay. We did a uh, sit-up. They now bent. The bench was not flat. They bent it. So sit-up, I was supposed to lie on a flat bench and come up. They bent the bench. So when I go down, I will go down by 45 degrees. When I wanted to come up, I now discover my whole back was ache. He said, no, just, just do two sets. What is two set? It's 50, 15 times. I gathered my masculinity. I stretched. I stretched. When I finished, my back was on fire. I thought that was all. He showed me some other things I did. The next day when I woke up, I tried to carry my leg from the bed. I discovered that my leg had become like, like a log of wood. I couldn't lift my leg. When I stood up, I was walking my... My 80-year-old version was imparted on me. I was walking like this. If I shake any part of my hand, I will feel so much pain. I say, I'm not going there again. I say, no. If you don't go, when you go later, the whole pains will come back. And because I didn't want the pain to come back, I labored after two days because he massaged it. After two days, I went back. I started again. Oh, I've run for the past three weeks. That's how tongues is. When you go, halakako, seke, seke. Give people who start this job, they will begin. They will not check. It's three minutes. <laughs> you will now wait and ask yourself, how do they pray in tongues for five hours? It's a journey of the spirit. It takes help. Tongues means help me, Lord. They sometimes they even want to impress you when you check it's now 12 minutes we will now see the one whose muscles are developed you know there's a way they oppress people in the gym when you come the ones that have done it for some time they will come they will put a lot of weight and they will use one hand <laughs> when they drop it you now go and check you <laughs> will drop it when this young one shout, shout, then you see those who have been here for a while, they are still booting. Manda Kabak. Zelegumbra Kavakaste Vregadidis. Ragaba. Because it's a marathon. But you see, all of that is very important because it activates your spirit man. So when you see a man stand, he's going somewhere, he stops. He's supposed to take a journey. He has reached the park, but he picked a sign, go home. It's not because he's not af he's afraid though. It's not because he doesn't have faith. But today, something is ahead that he can't handle. 
but there's discernment. The spirit is awake. He said, go home. He will leave the journey and go home. Sometimes he will even be coming. He will hear, stop here. And he will stop. After some time, go. He will go. He will miss the bus by one seat. And when he enters the second bus, although late, but he will find that first bus that went, it would have kept falling, falling over a cliff. You, when you look at it, you will know that that's your grave. But the difference is that your spirit is awake. You want to enter a business. You have already agreed. The last night, almost all the papers were signed. But you heard the delay. You say, wait. Okay, come in the morning. You now went home. You didn't pick where. You still charge. You are activating because the, the, the spirit is a picker of frequencies. As you stretch, stretch, stretch. After a while, you hear, no, don't go forward. The person will call you the next day with excitement. We are going to hammer. We are going to hammer. I say, hi, my brother. Leave that business for another time. He will not understand why you are like this. But God has saved you. You can't pick those frequencies until the spirit is active. The reason many believers are victims is not because the insurance of God is not with them. They don't have activated spirits. The spirit is dull. So the spirit can't pick things. Meanwhile, the difference between life and death sometimes can be a whisper. But it will take an activated spirit to catch it. So Paul said, when I'm praying in tongues, although my understanding is not working, he said my spirit is into a very strong spiritual engagement. And what it does for my spirit is that it makes me become a spiritual man. I no longer judge by the senses. I judge by the signals that I pick in my spirit. Are you seeing that? They are called benefits of praying in the spirit. There's so much in Christianity, but most of them, you pick them as you journey through life. And many don't know how to pick things. Number four, why do we pray in the spirit? Praying in the spirit opens you up to the help of the Holy Ghost. Because as you pray in the spirit, it will lead you into groaning. And I shared some things with you on groaning the last time. Romans 8.26 that we just read. The spirit helped our infirmities. Now these infirmities are majorly knowledge gaps. He said for we know not what to pray for. And even if we know what to pray for, we don't know as much as we ought to. So there are many times you are praying. And you have prayed for 4 hours, 5 hours, 10 hours. But God checks. You still can't win this contract too. So what God will do is that he will activate groaning. So the Holy Ghost will complete the prayer for you. Because although you know you are supposed to pray for that contract, you don't know to what extent you need to pray for the judgment to change in your favor. But you see, the Holy Ghost will not be allowed room to come in except as you pray until he takes over. There are many times when you are praying for the wrong thing. You are praying for promotion. Meanwhile, that week, there's an accident that should take your life. And you didn't even see it. But when you pray... The way the Holy Ghost will help you is that the Holy Ghost will reprogram the activity. So he's helping you because there is an infirmity all of us have. And that infirmity is called knowledge gaps. The best of us does not know all. And so there are many times when if you are praying, the weight of the Spirit will come upon you and he will take over. When that happens, he is trying to help your infirmities. And I told you last week, I said don't do it mechanically. There are many people who think it shows that they are spiritual. And so every day they start praying, they start groaning. No, it's the spirit that initiates it. It's not something that happens on the time. Go and check the Bible. You will find many times men prayed in the spirit. Very few times people groaned. Very few. Very few times. Because it's not, it's not a common practice. It is something the Holy Ghost initiates to help your spirit. From Acts 2, they started praying in tongues. And you will see it consecutively in scriptures in scriptures continually but only once did paul said groaning is also possible he said the holy ghost helps us and i told you many times jesus groaned in the spirit in gethsemane he was groaning in the spirit he was groaning he didn't pray in tongues somebody called me the other time i said did, did you say jesus prayed when you are talking is it's dangerous to crack jokes sometimes. Some of us are humorous and it's a body. You finish sharing what you are sharing, you now crack a joke, they still pick it. Because, you know, the, these media people, eh, they, there is something happening in the media. There's a terrible revolution. They are so unfair. They will just pick something out of context and try to make a big deal because 
it creates um, controversy, and that controversy creates view, and the view creates dollars. So they will pick this. Just I say, I was <laughs> Jesus prayed in the spirit, but he didn't pray in tongues. I was just grow, uh, trying to be hilarious, just to ventilate. <laughs> You see, I had to write the, the three times because it will mislead people. Some people hear it now and say, Apostle Mike, he, he understands mysteries. He must have seen something somewhere to say that. So sometimes the reason we do this thing is to help people. Do you know, after I taught this last week, two, two or three people reached out to me and said, when I was talking about groaning, some of the I was just doing some spontaneous gesticulation to help younger believers and somebody called me and said that this thing I was saying and was asking is it this apostle that I was talking about I said what what kind of heart is this I was I was I was lit I was almost confused I said why do people think like this I will now come and stand on my altar and be mimicking somebody. Won't, if I have the Holy Ghost, won't he convict me? What will you gain by doing that? So when you hear some of these things, you are just, you are just, you are shocked at the, the, the heart of people. It would be wrong to come and ridicule a man of God or to ridicule a practice that God gave to a ministry. That would be pride. Because it will be you showing as if what you know is the best. But why do we do some of these corrections? Because there are many young believers who don't do these things by the Spirit. When I preach, I preach with a lot of gesticulation. And many times I tell even those of you who are here, that don't start doing those things. Allow the Holy Ghost. When you, when you find the realm, you will find your posture. When you find the realm, you will find your dimension. Don't, it's possible to, you know, there are many things to these things. There are, there are so many things to this reality. Let me explain something to you. A spiritual man, usually, one of the things that makes a spiritual man is the dimension he's operating from. And most times when you touch a dimension, that dimension will leave its signature on you. That signature can manifest in the, the flavor of your utterance. It can manifest in your posture when you are operating in the spirit. That's not carnality. That's the move of the spirit. Now, the problem is that many times people who come to you, they just want to do what you are doing. Now, at a level, it is good. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, Paul said, Be ye followers of me, as I am the follower of Christ. The word is mimitos. Mimic me, the way I mimic Christ. But you see, as you begin to grow, you will grow from mimicking to finding your own dimension in God. But if you see that people don't grow and they are stuck, to a posture or to an operation they begin to invent carnality into it that carnality will now take them away from god so when we address these things is because we are trying to help young believers we are not talking to men of god that are operating from their throne we are not the only people that know the holy spirit because that's the dimension god has given to them in fact sometimes when god gives you a dimension he can impact it to your followers as a signature of that tribe and when you see it the consistency the energy and the presence it generates will show you that this is of god for example can a Hagen sometimes several times come for meetings and when the holy ghost comes down everybody's laughing and running it was a signature god gave his ministry if you attack that now you may be attacking the move of the spirit but there are other people who can do it carnally. So if a preacher wants to teach, he can tell you, don't run around and be disorderly because you are filled with the Holy Spirit or because you want to show people that the Holy Ghost is there. It doesn't mean he's talking to Kenehagin. But you see, what media wants to do is they want to create a lot of confusions, confusion. And then when people are not mature, you now see people begin to create cold wars and attacking themselves and the innocent followers that should grow we now start taking sides and at the end of the day they are victimized i just i was so pained when i heard it my only consolation is that 
I have, and I don't want to call any name before they go and tag something now. My only consolation is that the apostle they were referring to is my very good friend. He was part of my men of suit to show you how close we are. Some years ago, before I relocated to Abuja, sometimes when he comes to my court, he does retreat in my house. I will leave my bedroom, my personal bedroom. He will be there. I will travel. Fun time, four days. Closeness. You are coming to my court for retreat. Come and pray. That's how close we were. And we still are. There are times when I have a body, I call him because I know you are, he has grace for prayer. Omo, see this challenge, see this challenge, help me. And he will take it up with his men and they will pray and pray and call me. This is what God said. And then somebody is online. He doesn't even know what's happening. He thinks we are talking about somebody because he thinks you are as kind as he is. When they called me and told me about it, I was so heartbroken. And the danger of this thing now is that when you are preaching the word of God, you are becoming careful. And as you start being careful, you start limiting the Holy Spirit. So you see the evil behind these things. And then the young believers who don't know any better will think you are trying to attack this person, you attack this person, and it starts creating bitterness in their hearts. And instead of growing. I've gone to minister there three years ago because I believe in him. Most of his brethren, there were times when he called me and said, all oh, my people here and your messages that they hear come and bless us 217 2018 when all of us were in the cave and then somebody now comes to discover us online and is talking this kind of thing it's so unfair because of the thousands of people that may have heard those things and it would have affected their hearts and even those that would have caught it by impartation if they hear it now they may just so these things are they are bad they are not so nice they are not so nice it corrupts the purity of the priesthood it corrupts it and it's not good the man of god is a very spiritual man what he's doing he has been doing for many years it's not media that made him to do it that's the posture he caught when he touched the realm and there are those who follow him that received it by impartation and it can be a signature of his tribe but will be foolish to attack such things we know when God is doing something. And when you come to preach like this, it's to help younger believers and those who may be in error so that they can redress. If you are not doing it by impartation, if you are not doing it by divine leading or operation, find your dimension. That's why we teach it. But you see, this generation is a body. It's a body. One of the hardest things to do now is to teach the word of God. It's so difficult. So difficult. We are brothers. We are kingdom functionaries. And we have a relationship that is deeper than media. It's deeper than media. Some of us, some of you saw my, my bachelor's night. And you saw that most of the young people God is doing. Because of my heart posture, I believe we are one. We all gathered together. We prayed and flowed. So that at least our own generation will pass the test of unity and oneness. That was my body. And it's still part of my...